We missed our opportunity to get trauma out of here. Whose fault is it? Urex. Not gonna lie, this is gonna turn me off of Urek for a little while because we missed our opportunity. But, um, looks like the fight's over, guys. Um, not gonna lie, fight was lit. That final part, this final chapter of this, um, definitely looks like what we expected from a family head battle. Un uncomprehensible concepts of power being used. Um, just hacks versus hacks. Like, just, just great shit, right? And then Urek coming in and to kind of wipe it all out. It's kind of insane, but, um, not gonna lie to y'all. Traumary was impressive, okay? I gotta give it to the zookeepers. Um, throughout this entire fight, Traum has been super impressive. Um, you know, after he reabsorbed everything and that disconnection, um, full version is just insane, right? Um, I'm not, and I can say that Gusting didn't show what I expected him to show. And I wonder if that's it with him. Um, it's kind of boring, I'm not gonna lie, just with the book in him. Um, I hope there's more to it, but um, you know, there's no denying that the fight was basically over. Like, cope however you want, but, like, Urex saved Trump's life. There's no if, hands, or but about it. He was about to get packed up. Um, but anyway, let's get into the chapter. Thanks for 2,000, guys. I'm so glad to be here working on some new videos. Um, it'll be out sometimes within the next week. Um, so hit that subscribe button. Let's get into the battle. So, the soul monster concept is kind of insane. Like, the design of it... Um, it has arms, it has these, all these mouths on it with, with the bodies of the soul, like people within it. And the thing that it can be turned into a barrier, it's wielding weapons, it can blast off beams. Like this the entire thing is just really cool from a creative standpoint. Some nasty work for Gustang to deal with, right? So Gustang is basically um, dealing with it and cleaving through it, making his way to Traumary, where Traumary blocks Yopi with his hand, but he's burning, right? And I'm so, like super surprised to see that Gustang actually is having misgivings you know because from what we've seen Gus has been pretty black and white about everything you know that let's go to war i'm going to end you this this and that right but he actually is having problems with finishing off trauma like in an emotional way and it gives more character to gustang if you ask me um because like as as much of a bookworm and a stickler as he seems bro does care so, um, after the little scuffle, they back up and we get the blast from the Soul Beast, which I don't know if it has a name or anything, I don't think it does, but, um, the blast pretty much, you know, like, destroys Gus doing, like, encased barrier that he's in, and he's feeling pretty pressured, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty impressive, um, the beam and the way Trauma is fighting. And so, Tron backs up, and we get a new technique from him, um, Tron Reishensu, um, style technique, where he basically looks like a bunch of disconnections that are about to blow up the entire space. Um, you see how destructive and how big it is and like it even reaches up to the area where Urek and them is at. Gustang is still talking to himself like, look, I need to just do it. And then he ignites the flame of Blossom. So there's a lot in this Blossom flame, all right? And we can have this discussion about it because I know the power spirits are losing their mind over this, right? So this flame supposedly has the ability to burn things away that can't be seen. And I know people are kind of upset a little bit because the Yeon family is supposed to be the family of flames. Um, but I have a different idea about this, right? So Traumary does say that this flame is the most destructive flame. After he's already tripping from seeing it, like, wasn't this sealed? Why do you have it? Gustang does go to explain, like, it was given to him by um, Blossom to defend somebody that he loves, which in IE is supposed to be any. And, you know, it kind of... It's kind of sad because, you know, Gustang does realize that he was supposed to use it for any. And we know what his mindset was back then. It's a little bit different. Like, he wiped his memories and everything. But it gives a broader idea about why Blossom and Gustang were together, right? And why they broke up. Because when we see Trauma like, say, oh, that's why you got dumped. You know, the, the idea was always that, like, because any got snatched... Um, and maybe some disagreements that, you know, Traumary and Blossom, I mean, that Gustang and Blossom weren't together. But, like, Blossom actually gave Gustang a tool to help protect his daughter. So that had me thinking, like, yo, maybe she's seen a scenario or foresaw a place where Eddie could be, like, in jeopardy. And Gustang was supposed to defend her. And maybe if that happened, they both would have crashed out on Zahar's empire and be in a uh, like long-standing war together. Like that's how I'm seeing this now. But Gustang looks like he chose Zahar's side over his daughter. And I, that makes me really wonder how Blossom feels about everything. 
and I can honestly see Blossom like in the middle of everything in terms of making decisions. Like maybe she has like a lot of misgivings about the heart in them and, and trauma for, for what happened to any. Or maybe she blames Gustang because Gustang should have been more involved in what happened, given that when we seen um any finally discover, you know, the Zahar stuff, Gustang can't guide her or help her because he doesn't know anything. So um, you know, it's crazy. It made me think of Arlen and V, like, like seeing this, like, you know, they like really could have rebelled like they did. But regardless, um, so this flame, right? This flame is kind of crazy. And again, we, we were thinking about the Yeon flame, and then we got this flame. Like, you know, it's supposed to be one family with flames because we know that, like, you know, every family has their own, like, you know, qualities, right? Like, Traumary has, like, uh, the, the animal tamers or whatever. Um, you know, uh, you can call Gustang's family a little bit of a mix, but not necessarily a real family. So it's weird how you want to botch their power up, but they kind of all have everything, right? Um, then, you know, Kuhn family, Ice Lightning, um, uh, Yeon family is supposed to be fire. But the way I'm thinking of the Yeon family now, like maybe their fire is a physical fire, right? Like, because we know they have the healing flame that, you know, that heal Kuhn and but also there could be like the physical flame that does destruction like we saw with yiwa so this flame of blossom destroys things that can't be seen that's what traumary tells us right and that's the quality of his shinsu so maybe the reason why it's the most destructive flame in this way is because it can burn things like souls so just think about concepts in the tower that exist right what did we learn in this season that souls souls are a massive thing okay when people die their souls supposed to return to the flow of shinsu um necromancy is, is super frowned upon um and and that you know the flow of shinsu goes throughout the tower and you, you know we know the administrators control it if this flame can destroy stuff like that then that would absolutely make it the most destructive flame in the tower because shinsu flows throughout the entire tower it's supposed to so if her flame like got out of control, it could possibly destroy the entire tower. It could destroy the entire flow of Shinsu. That's why it got sealed. Just just trying to picture something that like that could do something of that scale is not even fathomable because like even like parts of this fight wasn't fathomable. But that's why I think it's the most powerful flame because it has the ability to destroy the entire tower. Now, again, that's completely separate from what I think the Eon family flame is. They are a physical flame family where um, they do the most physical damage. I don't think that this flame of blossoms can do real burning physical damage as much as a Yeon family fan could so it's super effective against Trom because his whole Shinsu quality is the concept of using souls so it's super effective against him um but yeah so that's my thoughts on it you guys let me know what you think about it it basically um you know trauma is very defensive against this flame because of how powerful it is and he goes in like defense mode with you know gustang basically cleaving through his barrier um using some book techniques using this water that kind of destroys everything and trom tries to disconnect it you know disconnect really is like trom's like whole bag like i'm not gonna lie trom trom's fighting style i like it don't get me wrong but disconnect really is his saving like grace move so the fact that gustang does have a counter i can see why <laughs> zookeepers would be mad about it because this is an op move but he does have a counter for it which is his flame even though it's a temporary counter but it works right so he counters it and this is the moment gustang is even having flashbacks about trauma like this is the moment and despite all the stuff that we've been talking about the civil war stuff and joking about this this is a moment like this was gonna be a moment for for gustang he was like you're remembering the the key moments when you met this guy like it's literally like not like it's not like he doesn't care about trauma you don't have those type of thoughts and flashbacks at the end of somebody's life if you don't care about him so it's it's kind of a bittersweet but it's like gustang says we have become the evil in this tower that we must be burned away and gustang is a man who stands on his morals at least he didn't before and he's trying to become the guy that he was before and it's because he lost everything. He lost everything not standing on his morals. He lost his wife, he lost his child, 
and he basically a shell of himself. I mean, he's not like Traumary where he's cool with sitting in, in the house and, you know, chilling all day. Like, he was supposed to, he had a job and, you know, it was given to him and he didn't do it. So, um, yeah, but basically, you know, we see Urek jump into the fight, um, stops everything and threatens both of them. And it's, it's kind of depressing because we wanted to really see what would happen. Um, I especially did. And Urek interrupting this kind of sucks. You know, it's like, Lusleck, like, like, I thought you was keeping this man in check. Like, Lusleck would have uh, got what he wanted if he kept Urek in check for another moment. But he didn't. So, it's kind of like, and, like, where do we go from here? Like, do they do they tell Urek, fuck him? Um, you know, Trom did see kind of surprised to see Urek. So, I, I'm eager to really see the exchange now. But I really thought Urek was going to crash out on Trom. Like, that's how it was kind of written last week. But he didn't, he kind of just stopped the fight, but didn't do anything to Trom. So it was, it's kind of weird. I don't know how to feel about it. Um, the chapter is still gas, like still, uh, definitely eight and a half out of 10. I don't think it's a 10 because the disruption and the way Urek crashed out was kind of, kind of weird. Um, just like, because the malice looked like it was towards Trom, like he was looking at Trom, but it didn't happen that way. So, um, yeah, so definitely let me guys know um, what you think is going to happen next week. Um, I can predict that, you know, it's going to be exchanged between the two. Maybe we flash back the bomb. Um, but um, chapter was decent. Stream on Friday per usual. I'll see you guys then. Hit the comment section, Discord, all that below. Peace.